Hello, it's Dr. Orlando Landrum here to bring to you another session of Take Back Your Life Thursdays with a informative discussion about PEMF. And fortunately, I have Kevin here with me from the restorative spot that can give us some insight so much about PEMF, how it can benefit you as a patient, how it can benefit you as a person, and all the various different things that um, it provides. Thank you so much, Kevin, for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to it. So before we kind of jump into the full gist of PEMF, I want to kind of give a, a quick uh, pub for some of the things that you do do, which besides PMF is only one of the minimal things that you do, but you do a lot of different things. And so as I understand it, you're located at the restorative spot, right? And this is your website here that has that a correct. whole whole host of different things that are done. And you're located at 2707 Middlebury Street. Uh, and the phone numbers, as you can see, is 574-326-3972. And just to kind of do a quick read of this, you have everything from cryotherapy to PMF to uh, electrocorporeal shockwave therapy to stem pods to medical pneumatic compression therapy to a whole host of things like infrared sauna to VO2 max that we've talked about before and potentially uh, other things like... Um, bariatric, uh, well, not bariatric, I apologize, uh, us talking about being able to use various different things like um, uh, massage and massage chairs and Wellness Pro Red, and I don't even need to, you got more, way more things here than I can even be able to read. That's how many things that you have in place to be able to provide in terms of value. And so it's just a phenomenal site uh, that really is able to treat individuals with pain and other ailments and get them back to being able to do the things that they want to be able to do. We are really excited to have you on as a guest today and really are hoping to be able to pick your brain specifically today about PEMF, but hopefully also to be able to kind of have some discussions in the future about some of the other many things that you do. Sure. So as we kind of get into this, one of the things that we really want to uh, kind of jump off from a starting point is, can you explain what PEMF is and give us some insight about like, what does that mean? What does it stand for? And what does it treat? Sure, PEMF stands for Pulsed Electromagnetic Field Therapy. And what it basically is doing is by increasing the permeability of the cell membranes, it allows oxygen and nutrients to enter the cell uh, more easily than it would normally and allows to take away the waste. Um, as it increases the circulation, there's many byproducts of that, which is what gives you all the medical benefits or the clinical benefits. Okay, so this has been around since like 1979 or so, hasn't it? How is it that it's not more well known? Actually, it goes back to uh, Nikola Tesla. Um, he was doing studies of this way back in the early 1900s. Um, there's a lot of medical research that he had done, and it didn't really start taking place until uh, NASA did a study back in 2003, which really brought it more into the mainstream. But yeah, the FDA... Um, they're always slow to work on alternative type medicines. In 79, the FDA has approved it so far for um, depression and anxiety, uh, non-union bone fractures, uh, which are basically bones that are not healing properly on their own. Uh, they've also allowed uh, FDA treatment for urinary incontinence in women, migraines, and uh, the blastoma, which is uh, like a brain cancer. Those are the FDA approvals at this time. Okay, can you describe what's a patient's experience like when they uh, have this performed? Is it like a burning, a shocking, a tingling sensation? I mean, is it something where they feel like they're getting poked, like as if a doc was prodding them with needles or something? What does it feel like? Basically, it's a very comfortable um, procedure. You can be laying on a table. 
I have a chair. I've got a chair with a footstool, a rocker, or we can even use like focus pads and paddles where it is just focused on a particular joint. We can put one on a shoulder or around the head uh, for the migraines like they were speaking. If you lay on the table, the entire table is energized. You'll feel kind of like an involuntary muscle contraction at certain settings. A lot of people uh, equate it to like a, uh, a TENS unit. It's a totally different technology because the PEMF is working at the cellular, um, cellular base instead of the TENS is more of a uh, electrical current that is stimulating the nerves. Uh, while the TENS is very highly effective, which I'm sure you've used in many times, it's not increasing the healing process. Whereas with the PEMF, you may feel that muscle twitching or you may feel uh, like a pulsing and it may move around as the treatment continues. One of the things is like if you're laying on the table, a lot of times I hear uh, clients or patients will say, you know, it started in my shoulder and now I'm feeling it in my low back or I'm feeling it in my hip. And basically what it's doing as those neurons are being attracted to problem areas, well, when your body is bringing those more up to charge and as it's needed elsewhere, you'll feel that focus go to somewhere else. But it's, it can feel like a tingly and it can even be set so low that you do not even feel it. It's more of a um, just a therapeutic dose. OK, so I know you mentioned a number of different conditions that can be treated, things like depression and non-union bone fractures. But in your own anecdotal experience, what have been some of the things that have been most responsive to this type of treatment? Probably one of my best um, treatments has been uh, backs, uh, back pain, shoulder pain have probably been my two most um success stories, if you will. The anecdotally, the um, uh, relaxation, there's several different um, people that have used that. And I've got two elderly ladies that are both off of all of their sleep medicines now, combining the PEMF along with some red light therapy. And it's just increasing that circulation, helping the muscles relax is going to help with the um, sleep management. It's just putting you into a natural deeper sleep. As far as um, I've had some great, I had one case in particular, which I sent you the x-ray. We've got uh, one high school football player that broke his fibula and we did the um, PEMF, and we did the shockwave therapy on that. And if you look at the dates, we on 12-5 or 8-19 of uh, last year, this was what he presented with. And then four days later, you'll see the other x-ray on the right. Now, the angle is slightly different, if you'll notice, but it was a markable um, increase in the bone healing. We basically took about a third of the time out of the natural healing cycle and got him back playing his senior year of football. Wow, that's crazy to be able to have that kind of impact on uh, being able to uh, influence bone healing and back challenges and other things. Um, you know, normally I kind of put this a little bit further down in my question selection, but I, I think this is almost an alley-oop. So if you could potentially have a billboard about anything, <laughs> what would you have a billboard about? Just that there are other ways of accomplishing um, pain relief and health other than just pharmacology. Okay. So what drew you originally to PEMF uh, that, you know, kind of sparked you to say, you know what? I know that there's some research, but I want to get involved trying this. I personally uh, went and tried it myself. I went to a, um, somebody that has actually the same machine I ended up purchasing. 
and I just tried it. And I didn't get a lot of um, pain relief from it, but I didn't really have any pain per se. But with all the research, I started looking at it and I, I could feel something, but I, I wouldn't have staked my reputation on it. After I bought the unit, they gave me a, a, a 90 day money back guarantee on it. I'm like, okay, let's, let's give it a shot. I noticed those little aches and pains as we get older, you know, uh, revetted uh, injuries from football, clear back in college and things like that. All those little aches and pains seem to go away. And that's been the biggest thing that I personally have noticed was just relieving all those aches and pains of getting older. Uh, it does very relaxing. Matter of fact, more than once I've fallen asleep on the table and have gotten a phone call uh, asking me if I'm coming home tonight because I'm not at home yet and I'm asleep on the table. <laughs> well, to hear you kind of describe it, and I, I want you to kind of characterize this for me because maybe I might be missing it, but it sounds like it might even be helpful for decreasing like medication use. So if you normally use it for Tylenol or you normally use Tylenol or ibuprofen or things along those lines to help deal with so, some of those nagging aches and pains, you may be able to do and treat with a more holistic fashion. Is that something that might be a fit? Very much so. Um, we've had some good success with migraines. Uh, it, it scares people a little bit when we put those paddles over each ear and we're putting it through the head, but it is very safe. The FDA has approved it for that. Um, it will help even with the uptake of medications and supplements. So if you are using a prescribed medication or even over-the-counter medicines, we can increase the uptake and how your body utilizes that with possibly a slower dose, taking it easy on the liver and some of the other bodily functions. Okay, so I know there are some people that would probably have concerns about the aspect of electromagnetic frequencies and such and how it might impact one and to use a fancy word in a deleterious or in other words, bad way. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about how this EMF might be different than other different types of like magnetic fields or other electrical fields that are out there that people would have concerns about? Yes. Matter of fact, um, EMF is a very um, big buzzword right now with people are scared of them because of cell towers and um, all kinds of different things. There's different wavelengths and frequencies in EMFs. So the PEMF is using um, a lower wavelength than like the cell phones. And uh, I was just quickly looking for the exact frequency. But the... Um, but anyway, which way, the the exact frequency is much lower in the PEMF than what you're being exposed to with the um, cell towers and the uh, electrical lines, power lines, things like that. Even though they, um, they have found that, and the other thing, not to jump around, but the other thing that they have noticed was when you're living, let's say, under a power line, those EMFs that you're being exposed to are a constant exposure versus a PEMF where it's just a pulsing and it's for a very short period of time, a short period of time being a half hour, hour session, uh, a few times a week or daily even. But it's, it's at a much lower frequency and it's a much cleaner filtered power than what you're getting off of the power lines, the Wi-Fi routers, things like that. Okay, got it. Thank you for helping us out with that. So um, in addition to that one football player that you helped so much, which I'm sure that he had to just be stoked, um, who else would you say that, you know, you've been able to treat and they've said, you know what, this has been just altering of what I would normally do. It's been incredibly impactful. Can you talk about some other patients that have had good results? Sure. 
Um, one of them that's been kind of uh, comical is I have a uh, friend that's a UPS driver, and he was having a lot of shoulder discomfort and pain and having all kinds of problems. He was getting ready to actually go have a MRI done and have some um, trying to figure out what's going on because he's obviously using it every day and not properly resting it. So I said, hey, let's come on over. Let's give it a shot. I, you know, it'll take a couple of treatments, but we'll see what it, we can do and how it'll help. Well, it was funny because he got up a half hour later and he's like, it's fixed. And I'm like, no, that's crazy. I said, it's probably feeling better. You know, I expect, you know, we're going to take a couple of treatments and it may be kind of an ongoing thing, but you know, it just feels better. He's like, no, literally it is fixed. And he's moving the shoulder around, increased range of motion. Um, and it was just after one session. So afterwards, it, it's funny story is I got a phone call a month or two later and he's like, I'd like to try this magic table. And I could not understand what they were asking for. I don't, I wasn't sure what a magic table. Well, he had told his friend about it and had named it this magic table because he couldn't remember what PEMF stood for. But uh, he was very successful with it. And um, I've had numerous cases like that, along with like the, the sleeping has been a big thing. Um, where people have been so thankful that they can actually sleep without medications now. Okay. So, I mean, this sounds like it would be really well uh, posed and con and connected for different types of treatments for regenerative medicine or some pain treatments that are out there. It seems like it would be a great fit. And I know that we've uh, referred a number of patients over to try to be able to see how we can be able to get a good response. And I think that it makes all the sense in the world. So um, as we kind of talk a little bit more about PEMF, what are some of the myths that you think that are out there that really you can debunk for us and dispel uh, that people may commonly have and can kind of set the record straight? Sure. There are a lot of different myths about it. Um, you'll hear some people talk about high intensity PEMF and how that is bad for you. However, FDA research, NASA research, because it was actually used for helping build bone density for astronauts in a weightless uh, situation in space and helping with, uh, so they didn't lose that bone density while they were weightless. Um, so the high intensity has been proven that it is not a, um, thing, uh, not a problem. However, there are different types of PEMF. There's a low intensity, a high intensity PEMF. And basically with the, uh, the low power, it does work. Um, the advantage of the high power PEMF over the low power is it has the intensity to reach the tissues. Whereas with a low power device, it may just be getting superficially. Um, it's a very low uh, intensity of the pulses that are going through. So it may not have enough power to penetrate to let's say a hip or deep into the body to help with some of those issues. Um, it will take a longer period of time to make a low powered unit um, have the same effect as a high powered unit. There's also different types of units, but so a lot of times you'll hear that the high intensity is bad for you. Uh, then you'll also hear that only high intensity PEMF works. You can get a homeowner unit uh, with the PEMF. There's a lot of um, cheap units out there that you get what you pay for, obviously. But there's some low power units that are very good. And then there's some low power units and high power units. They're just a complete waste of money. But the, the low power and the high power both work. Um, the, the one thing that I like about the, the units that I have with the high power is you can have a um, digital unit and an analog unit. And in those two different types of units, they actually do different things. An analog unit is more of a spark chamber. 
And what it does is it has like a capacitor. And as it builds up that charge, it gets to a certain preset charge and then it jumps across that gap. And then that's what fires that pulse. Well, in a digital unit, it's mag it's electronically done that. So you can increase the intensity separately from the frequency. So you can make it a very fast frequency with a low intensity or a um, low frequency with a fast. So you can really do that with a spark gap unit or a analog unit. You're, you're just, it's a rheostat and you're basically just increasing the amount of intensity. And as you increase that intensity, it takes longer for it to build up power in that capacitor to jump across. So the higher intensity, it's going to be a very slow pulsing. Whereas with the digital unit, we can speed that up and do that. So there's, you know, there's advantages to both. I personally have both units. I've got a spark gap chamber and I do have the high intensity. And then there's also another unit called a Oasis map. And what that does is that also throws in uh, binary beats and vibration, and it really uh, increases that deep sense of relaxation as you go. But it just depends on what we're trying to um, do. You'll also hear things saying that you can do the same thing with like a grounding mat. And you can go online, you can read all about grounding mats. There again, it's just taking that PEMF that we're getting from the earth. What I'm doing with the machine is allowing it to be at a higher intensity than what you're getting from the earth so you can absorb it quicker. Uh, I'm sure you've heard about people walking out barefoot in the yard or putting grounding mats underneath their um, bed mattress and doing all those type of things. All of that works. Um, there's been anecdotal um, studies that have shown, and there's been a number of research. It's just you've got to be there for a much longer period of time. Um, different frequencies, you know, they'll say only this frequency works. There again, uh, I've seen some advertisements that you can treat yourself in eight minutes a day. It's like everything else. There's different dosages. There's different... Um, things that you need to do based on what your problem is. You cannot really overdose in the unit, but you basically get to a point of diminishing returns at a certain point where it no longer is being as helpful um, as it is as a quick um, case. There are a few contraindications though, that as we speak about that, that I want to make sure that people are aware of. And it's not um, anything that's major. The main absolute contraindication, if you've got an electrical implanted device, we cannot use it on or near that device uh, because it can, it can interfere with the function. So when you say electrical implanted device, those would be things like pacemakers, defibrillators, spinal cord stimulators, intrathecal pumps, those type of things, because it could be a potential um, cross reactivity that might cause some challenges. Is that exactly. right? Exactly. Same as like a uh, insulin pumps, uh, ocular implants for the ear or for the ear, the hearing. So there's a lot of different things, but that is the, they say as long as you're like six to eight inches away, um, it's a minimal. However, my personal, unless uh, a doctor overrides it, I will not provide PEMF therapy for anybody with a electrical implant. The other thing that is a pretty much a absolute contraindication is organ transplant patients. And pretty much because the PEMF could adversely affect the immune suppression uh, rejection process, you know, talking about increasing the circulation, uh, we may be moving those uh, products in and out of the systems quicker than what they're dosed for. So we want to be very careful about heart, uh, you know, not that somebody's going to be coming right in after a lung transplant or a heart transplant, but we want to be very careful with things like that and make sure that it's not going to be in that rejection time, time frame that we could possibly cause a adverse reaction. 
the other um, something that to kind of just be aware of is some of the autoimmune disorders um, like Graves disease, things like that. It's not an absolute contraindication. We just kind of adjust the therapeutic dose based on that. Um, I've personally seen with knees, um, I was very uh, disheartened uh, with using it on knees. I, I was having great success with shoulders. Uh, I had a person come in with a knee problem. I'm like, hey, let's put this on there. It worked great. Did the same therapy. She left. It felt really good. She called me the next day and her knee had ballooned up. And basically that sometimes will happen. The only place I've ever had it personally happen is in knees. Um, but basically, it increases the um, circulation and it can cause a uh, severe inflammatory process where it basically is increasing the inflammation that's already there. After having that happen to me, I actually spoke with um, one of the physicians at the uh, that does some science research, scientific research on the PEMF machines. And they said, you know, it's kind of a um, one in, you know, 50 type thing. Well, I've had two in probably 50, but it's always been a knee. But what has happened is if we, tur if we get them back in right away, as soon as they say, hey, it's swelled up, if we put them back in at a very high, high pulse per second, but a low power, it seems to reduce that inflammation back out and kind of a, um, it reverses that problem and it still keeps them feeling good. But, you know, I just tell everybody, hey, if you've got a um, problem after the treatment, reach out to us because it very possibly could be a detoxing of the body or an increased inflammation response. Um, Something that could possibly also happen is previous fractures or um, distal to those fractures where we're increasing that circulation. You could possibly feel some additional pain that you haven't uh, just because of the fact that we're increasing that circulation now. So very, very minor. Sometimes um, you could see a minor skin irritation uh, enhancement. Uh, so if you've got hives or something like that, it could possibly make it worse. However, I had one person that uh, we tried a very low dose with, uh, they had shingles, and we had very good success with that. It seemed to really help clear up her pain and her itching, but it was in the later stages as well. Okay. Well, that was a full informative piece of like all the different things that you kind of be able to kind of take a look at. So I do want to kind of piggyback on some of those statements though, and, and pose a few questions because I'm pretty sure our audience would be interested. So one of the things that we do here at Cutting Edge Pain Relief is really try to be able to educate patients about what are their options. And today, obviously, we're talking about post- post electromagnetic uh, frequency and how it can be able to provide value. We're talking about PEMF um, with Kevin from the restorative spot. And clearly someone wants to try to be able to get in and actually talk to him about how they can become a client sooner than not. If you take a look down here, it's a link to our YouTube channel that allows for you to be able to kind of see this in uh, perpetuity. It's evergreen content. So you can be able to reference this video going forward in the future. If you're interested in more content like this, by all means, sign up for our newsletter and give us a like. Um, it will give you all the various different connections of things that we are able to kind of present. But as you guys know, we talk frequently about uh, alternative therapies to how do you be able to prevent and actually treat pain in a different fashion. So it's not just saying, let's do steroids, let's do surgery and call it a day and cut it out and that's it. But really, can we be do, able to do a number of different things, whether it's revolving around nutrition, whether it's running around, revolving around exercise, whether it's dealing with regenerative medicine or the therapies like we're talking about today with PEMF. 
So to that end, Kevin, one of the questions I wanted to kind of pose to you is the following is because it seems like it changes blood flow, or at least to an extent, a number of our patients are interested in regenerative medicine. It was one of the things that really kind of piqued my original interest. Regenerative medicine has that sort of spectrum because it's a balance. When you take a look at the things that sort of exist and make it run well, sometimes the aspect of regenerative medicine, you're really dealing with the components of immunology. And so on the one end, you have kind of autoimmune dysfunction that can take place when we look at disease processes. And on the other end, you can have immune deficiencies that are in place. And that immune component and healing component is hugely important to have re having regenerative medicine function, which deals with a number of the different mediators, but also blood flow. Because you can be able to uh, impact blood flow in a positive way, we can't make certain uh, statements that would say for certain this is going to give value but it seems like it may be plausible that increased blood flow might be able to increase some of the regenerative properties that may be in place. What are your thoughts about that? Very much so. Um, it will definitely be a um, an enhancement to what you are offering. I definitely do not try to make this the end all, uh, cure all thing. They are in the process of doing cancer trials with it. Um, there's been some very good uh, research on that with the PEMF. But I would not delay proper medical treatment to do alternative. Uh, if it is anything, you know, it's a great enhancement. It's a adjunct to traditional medicine, but I don't think it's a replacement for traditional medicine. Um, as you, you know, as we have spoken before, you know, some of the stem cell work and some of that stuff, by increasing that circulation as a byproduct, that's what's going to reduce the inflammation. That's what's going to, um, you know, help with the bone mending. It's going to, you know, reduce the healing times, uh, the muscle recoveries, all of that type of stuff. So whatever you're doing in traditional therapies or, you know, in just in life in general, it's going to help and enhance that. Plus, as you release the tension of the muscles and that you're just going to let your body heal itself, which the body wants to do. Okay. Thank you so much. So let's kind of turn this to a more of a personal nature. So you have this cool tool, tool but as I mentioned before, this is not the only tool you have. You get like 20 or 30 different things in your back pocket to really be able to kind of help things uh, that and help people with. So can you give us a history about you and the restorative spot and, you know, how did you guys come about and what were your thought processes when you were finding, founding it? Give us some insight about you. Sure. Um, I played football. I played sports in high school, played football in college, got hurt. And that actually put me into the uh, massage therapy. I'm a massage therapist is my uh, state license. And it, it opened up a lot of opportunities. I've done this. Um, my first massage classes I took is way back in 1970 or no, 1989. Um, so it's, it's been a passion of mine. I've enjoyed it. It's really helped in the recovery. And I've always just done it part time because I had another uh, business that I was involved in, uh, took all my time and primarily just did athletes, all word of mouth, no advertising or anything like that. Well, a few years back, we I started, you know, talking that I'd really like to do more. There's a lot of therapies that are out there. There's a lot of alternative medicines, a lot of things that are available that are not being offered anywhere in this area. You know, if you're in the West Coast, Colorado, East Coast, and Texas for some reason, um, they've got some very good uh, things available. I mean, I'm sure a lot of your listeners have listened to like Ben Greenfield and the anti-aging and some of that stuff. Well, the more I got into taking classes, you know, I'm full body certified for active release techniques or ART, uh, the PEMF, the um, 
uh, the shock wave, which is a big thing. And there again, it's not really being done in this country unless you're a division one athlete or professional athlete, you do not have access to this as the general public. The main reason being is insurance companies will not pay or reimburse for these services um, because it's alternative therapy. Well, I opened up this to uh, combat that, you know, I do not accept insurance. I can't accept the HSA and the flex spending accounts. I've been approved for that, but insurance companies for the most part will not re reimburse for alternative medicines. So that, that being said, nobody wants to put the investment out there of equipment to do that when the insurance companies aren't going to pay for it. So I finally said, let's give it a shot. There it's working on, you know, both coasts. Let's see what we can do in the Midwest. And it's met with very good um, success. People have been very happy with it. I had to go up to Canada to be trained on the shockwave or the diathermy, or not diathermy, the uh, shockwave therapy. And I did like an internship up there because typically you take the basic class, then you go back, um, practice it for a year, then you go back to take the advanced class. But since I was out of the country, they gave me kind of an internship. I worked on their clients and patients in between the um, beginning class and the advanced class, which worked out great. I'm so thankful they allowed me to do that because I was working on professional uh, rodeo riders, professional stuntmen. I worked on a Canadian Olympic swimmer. And as far as alternative medicine, uh, Europe, Canada, they're like a light years ahead of us in offering preventative medicine. Whereas if I'm in a trauma situation, there's no place I'd much rather be than here in the US. Uh, we're very good at that. But as far as the alternative sides, um, because insurance companies dictate what is being done, it, even physical therapists and such, they're, they've got to follow steps A, B, C, D. Whereas if you're not going with the insurance, you can jump all the way from A to D to do exactly what's happening. So, you know, that led open to being, uh, for some people here, it is called a scraping or Graston technique. Um, I've got the infrared saunas, which is, uh, helps to heat up the muscles. I've got adaptive oxygen where they will um, breathe high levels of oxygen followed by uh, hypoxic type level, not hypoxic, but lower, simulating like 10,000 feet of altitude, like that 12 to 14% oxygen, instead of just restricting the amount that you're being able to inhale like some devices do this actually is only giving you that 12 to 14 percent oxygen we've got hyperbaric oxygen which we can put a higher partial pressure of oxygen into the body so instead of just breathing 100 percent oxygen at the surface it's like adding additional oxygen into that tissues helping with wound care uh, forcing oxygen into tissues that aren't normally properly being oxygenated so We've got a lot of different things like that. And then sports testing. Um, I, When I wanted to get my body fat tested, a DEXA scanner, the closest place is I drove to Chicago to get VO2 max testing, resting metabolic re testing, and the DEXA scan, which will give you your body bone density and body composition. will give you lean muscle mass, subcutaneous fat, visceral fat, all in a breakdown. Well, there was no place around for local athletes to do that. And then after I've opened up, I've really gotten all the way from geriatric clientele down to elementary kids that get injured um, due to some of the different things we've got. And, you know, helping swelling going down with things like the deep oscillation therapy. You know, we can make bruises go away very quickly just by increasing that circulation. So there's a lot of alternatives out there that can be done and just were not offered all in one place. There's a lot of places you can go to get this or that, but I wanted to kind of encompass all of that into one facility so you didn't have to travel over here for one thing and over here for another. And so it's just kind of been, I keep adding 
uh, equipment as I go to schools. You know, I'm usually at schools six, eight weeks a year. And, you know, just going to different things, learning different techniques, learning different ways of doing things and learning from others. And it's there's a lot out there that I haven't even scratched the surface of. And I keep getting in trouble because every time I come back from a school, I find something else that would work great. And we have to rearrange the building to make room for something else. Okay. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> so let me ask you this real quick. Uh, it seems like you originally got into this, though, from your own football injury. And it's kind of really interesting because it seems like many of the guests that we've had have had a personal story of how it's affected them. And then they said, you know what? And me seeking a solution, oh, well, maybe I should make this more, you know, uh, a broader outreach and how I can be able to kind of impact other people. We had that for Incrediware. We had that for some of our regenerative medicine uh, individuals and such. And it's kind of really sort of sparked sort of growth. Uh, how, what would be your percentage of clients right now that you feel are athletes that seem to really take advantage of this? Because they're saying, you know what, how can I be able to deal with some of the challenges that my body are being, my body's being faced with? I'm probably, well, I've really increased non-athlete um, exposure. I would say I'm probably still 60 to 70 percent athletes. And that can be everything from, you know, the high schooler uh, where they've, you know, it's not like when we were in school where you were a three sport athlete. Now everybody is being focused. So you get those repetitive use injuries. So, I mean, I'm seeing them um, junior high. Um, grade school, even high school, a lot of high school athletes. I work with uh, some of the uh, collegiate athletes, Notre Dame athletes. I've got several professional athletes that I worked on. And it's just one of those things that they seem to be the most willing to do that because it is directly impacting their performance or their recovery. I mean, like the cryotherapy chamber, we've got you know, instead of lay, sitting in an ice bath, uh, we can do a, you know, put you at negative 200 degrees Fahrenheit for three minutes. And I would much rather do that than sit in an ice bath for, you know, 15 minutes. It's very quick. It helps with all the inflammation. So there's a lot of things that the athletes approve or appreciate. And a lot of, like I said, the Division I schools or the professional sports teams have all this equipment, but it's not been available to the general public. So, you know, you get all the age groupers like myself that, you know, think we're still 18 and do stupid things and, you know, pay for it the next day. Well, we can help mitigate those problems. Okay. So, um, let me ask you this question, and I, I know I didn't prep you for this one, so it's going to come from far field, and I'm, I'm making you have to have some reaches, but I think you can be able to roll with the punches. It sounds like you've had some trauma before, so I don't think this one is going to be that traumatic for you. But as I listen to this and all the different things that you have to offer, it sounds like it can really impact a lot of myofascial and muscular issues and imbalances. And I know for the massage component is sort of your base, but when I think about that element, I, I kind of think about patients that have things like fibromyalgia and other muscular issues that just really just devastate them and prevent them from being able to kind of lead their normal life. Um, as opposed to us using some medications and such that really sometimes aren't all that effective, what do you think about it, us even giving some of these modalities a try? Do you find it, it benefits individuals who have things like that? Very much so. The myofascial release has been a game changer in my um, my personal massage practice. I uh, started really focusing uh, probably a year, two years ago uh, with a lot of uh, John Barnes's uh, training on myofascial release. And it has made a world of difference. I incorporate, um, you know, basically every time I've got somebody on my table, athlete, or, you know, a lot of times they'll come in and say, hey, I want a massage. Well, I was like, Are, is this relaxation or is this for a therapy, you know? And almost 80 to 90% of my clientele, because I don't, for some reason, get a lot of relaxation massage people. 
but you know they'll say i've got a particular problem well i'll throw in a lot of myofascial release i'll do active release while i've got them on the table and we'll throw some shockwave and a lot of times we'll end the session with pemf so i don't think there's one best therapy i think that you know uh, a combination of a lot of things but the myofascial release um, plantar fasciitis is a great case of that where I've had clients that uh, have had surgery on one foot and it's starting to bother them on their other foot and they they come to me because they don't want to go through a surgery we've had great success matter of fact I can't think of any of them I think all of them have not done the surgery then and have said that their non-surgical foot feels better than the one they actually had the surgery on just by, you know, helping with that fascial tissue. Um, the body is all of that, you know, it's combined with that fascial tissue. If you know what, a, like I said, a ten, tensegrity model, you know, if one thing's tight and one thing's loose, it's causing slack somewhere else and causing issues. So it all comes down to the fascial tissue. No matter what we're doing, you're very, uh, spot on with that, that if we don't treat the fascia, it's, it's not going to be a long lasting result. Okay. So circling back to that PEMF that we're talking about today on our channel, the pulse electromagnetic frequency and how it's being able to kind of impact people. Can you give us some insight about a patient that really touched your heart? I know you've talked and given us a few already, but really touched your heart not just kind of the ones that you're like, hey, this was a little wonky, but you're like, hey, this is actually something that I was like, oh, man, I made such an impact on this person. I changed their experience, and hence, it actually changed my practice. Yeah, I can give you uh, one in particular. He was a um, very out of shape um, business owner, and he had, you know, had all kinds of aches, pains, out of wind walking, you know, from, you know, through the front door to his office. And over a three month period, um, the PEMF, he had a lot of anxiety. He was having um, um, problems with sleep. He was having, you know, just all kinds of general health. And he had a goal that he wanted to um, be ready for a event that was coming up. We did the PEMF, uh, we coupled that with um, the adaptive oxygen. And, you know, it was so great because, you know, he was unable when he first started to be able to do a, you know, recumbent bicycle for, you know, 10 minutes without being out of breath and winded to the point where he was doing uh, rowing, a uh, uh, rower workout. And he was doing it for a half hour on low oxygen. He was just doing so good, um, you know, the PEMF, the adaptive oxygen, and some myofascial work. It just completely changed his body composition. Um, we could see, you know, he lost weight, you know, and just started feeling better about himself, his anxiety, his, you know, all of that self-image started increasing. It was great watching him make that progression over a short three-month period. Okay. So in terms of the aspect of uh, the things that you do at, uh, at the restorative spot, which again, we want to make sure people know where to reach you and how to be able to kind of contact you here. And we'll kind of put those that information up and uh, again, what are some of the therapies that you think really lend themselves to uh, helping with PEMF and providing value kind of co-jointly? I think probably um, the massage works very well in conjunction with it and the adaptive oxygen. I've been um, lucky enough to be part of a group that we're doing a study that was actually sponsored by the uh, NFL and the Air Force and working with concussion therapy and um, uh, concussions and uh, brain trauma along with PTSD. And with the PEMF coupled with the oxygen therapy, uh, some people will even... Uh, 
I'm sure they're familiar with like Wim Hof breathing, things like that. Coupling those type of projects together makes a world of difference of hyperoxygenating not only the tissues, but the brain and really seeing good results as effects. So, I mean, I love coupling it with the adaptive oxygen therapy type things to get those extra added benefits of oxygen. Okay. So let's say that you had to do this all over again. What would you do and what wouldn't you do? Oh, good question. I would, um, I would probably use a different building for one. Um, but there's never enough space in a building that you get. I think that one of the things is I would have started looking at some of the alternative therapies. Um, I spent way too much time on PubMed, which is a medical research site and other similar sites looking at medical research because it is out there. However, you cannot make those medical claims because the FDA has not approved them. But you can do the research. You can see things like Harvard Med School. You can see all these in, in this country and outside of this country that has been done with double blind placebo studies and has been very successful. I would have spent more time researching some of those things before I kept adding on. So I was ready to hit the ground running better when I started instead of I go to a training and it's like, oh, wow, um, you know, something else, kind of that shiny ball syndrome. And, you know, you jump over here and you look at that. And, it, you know, I would have started this years ago to try to, you know, incorporate it sooner. Okay. So if you can be able to take a and imagine you're looking at this same talk that we're having right now, three years from now. What has to have happened both personally and professionally for you to feel as if everything went successful the way that you wanted it to be? You know, I would say personally, I would love to see insurance companies be more apt to look at alternative therapies. Uh, I know some of your um, things that you offer, even though it's a much cheaper alternative, the insurance company would rather, you know, pay thousands of dollars or put somebody on a medicine for the rest of their life instead of offering some of these alternative therapies. I would, my life's work would be a success if I saw that happen. Uh, I really don't think it will, but it would be great if we did. Um, I would just, you know, I love seeing the difference it's making. Uh, I have not advertised. I mean, this is the closest to an advertisement I've ever had. Uh, we've got a Facebook page for Restorative Spot. We've got a website, RestorativeSpot.com. But, you know, it's all referrals. It's all word of mouth. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why I have so many athletes is, you know, you treat one athlete and they tell, you know, all their teammates. And then they start all coming in as a group. You know, I've got I actually have a couple of teams that, you know, I'll get six, seven people. They'll come in and do the compression sleeves, the PEMF, and I'll be working on one and they'll just rotate through. You know, we'll have five or six athletes and, you know, I'll work on them and we'll just do a round robin circle. You know, races, you know, I've got a uh, running store that I treated one of the employees and, you know, plantar fasciitis. A lot of runners come in with a problem. You know, she'll start telling them, oh, wow, you know, I had this for a couple of years, three or four sessions, it was much greater, you know, I'm running, no pain now. And so it's one of those things that it, it just, I would really like to see Western medicine, MDs such as yourself, take this approach where it couples with Western medicine instead of, you know, I don't think it's an either or, I think they work great hand in hand. Okay, well, we're not going to let you get off the hook. You kind of blended that personal and professional together. And professionally, what else, What other therapies are you going to add? What else you got, man? You, even if you had like infinite space and the building wasn't limited, what else are you going to do? Uh, well, I uh, 
there's a couple of other therapies for um, uh, movement that I would like to address, uh, along with some of like the vibration therapies. I would really like to incorporate some of that to just help the elderly people because the PEMF has had such a profound effect on numerous elderly patients, not just with increasing bone density. Uh, I couple that with the uh, uh, biomed uh, uh, to help with uh, improving their bone density as they get older, especially older with females. And there's some other um, things that I'm actually looking at. Uh, if the whole COVID thing hadn't happened, I would have had a couple of other things already in place. But, you know, we're waiting until this all settles down and or before we throw any more equipment at it. Noted. All right. So just so we can be clear, we want to make sure people can be able to know where to find you. And as I understand it, this is your website, the restorative spot, correct? And I believe as we kind of scroll down here, it gives us various different connections where they can be able to email you or reach out. And then this is the aspect of your address with the phone number 574-326-3972. And you have hours by appointment uh, only. And it's typically from eight to nine for both Monday through Friday and also Saturday and Sunday sometimes too. Is that correct? Yeah. What, uh, what I found is, you know, people work for a living. They make it, it's very hard to um, get in during the day, especially student athletes or, you know, the working family. They don't want to take off work for it. So evening and weekends have been a very big part of my business. And I've just tried to, um, make it accessible for them. You know, you can feel free to email me at any time. It's Kevin at restorativespot.com. And, you know, I'd, I'd love to talk to you. Uh, as you notice, we did by appointment only uh, because of the COVID type thing. We're basically, instead of having, you know, two or three people doing something at the same time, it's more of a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we wait till one client's done and then we move on to the next just so we don't have that cross contamination, just trying to be proactive and be safe with that. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us. For those of you who are able to kind of tune in and uh, really provide value, give us a like and subscribe to our channel. For those of you who are, who are kind of catching this as a follow-up, by all means, uh, take a look at our YouTube channel and subscribe so you can get other informative pieces. Kevin and I, we're going to talk again about some of the other therapies that he has that can be able to provide value besides us just talking about PEMF today. Clearly, we have this Take Back Your Life Thursdays. And if you want to be able to get more information, by all means, join our newsletter, which will give you some insight. And we thank you so much for joining us, Kevin, and giving us all the information about PEMF, how it can be of value, and what it is that you guys do. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you very it. much for having me. I appreciate it. All right, everyone, we will see you back next week. Take care and have a great day. Thank you.